Now look, Windows has been the king of PC gaming for decades, but things are about to change. Look, Microsoft recently has made a great effort to try to get major control over everyone's data. On top of that, just AI, AI, AI everywhere you go. It, it seems like Microsoft forgot why people like computers. However, despite the storm going on, exists an OS that the majority of people love, SteamOS. Linux has made strides in recent years. And in this video, I'm gonna break down why SteamOS itself just destroys Windows at gaming especially. And there's one specific thing that SteamOS does that Windows doesn't, I'll get into that, so stay tuned. Listen, I'll be fair to Windows, all right? Windows works with the majority of apps you wanna use, especially for productivity and some creative work like video editing and stuff like that. And the thing with gaming on Windows is that you won't run into any games that don't work because of a lack of any cheat or something like that. And most of them just install and run perfectly fine, assuming they're not super old. And with most peripherals, they're all pretty much gonna work plug and play with Windows as well. Hoping those drivers even exist isn't really a thing also on Windows. That's what most drivers are made for. Another thing is if you have an Nvidia GPU, you can't even use Linux really that great. However, on Windows, that's not the case. Works across the board. So Windows with compatibility and just across the board support for everything, it's just an overall better device for that. Now, on to why Windows is just bad. I think you know by now, but Windows updates. Listen, Windows updates far and wide ever since the beginning of Windows have been the bane of everybody's existence with forced updates happening at random points while you're working, some updates just breaking drivers you have, other updates breaking your computer. And look, as many times as Microsoft promises us a security fix, we really don't know deep down below if it's gonna kill our computer in the process. Not only that, but Windows is set up to be so optimized optimized in an awful way. Power management on Windows is weird. Windows on handhelds isn't that great of an experience as well, and it's kind of clunky still. Windows sometimes forgets that you're the owner of the computer and wants to let you know that you need permission to delete something, which I still think is cr crazy. I own my own computer, let me delete something on the root drive. And on top of this, Microsoft's recent push of AI and Copilot and all this other stuff, which really started with Cortana back in the day, if you remember that, it just hasn't been a great time and it seems like they're prioritizing the stocks rather than they are the actual consumers buying their licenses, which is another thing. Windows licenses literally drive the price up for pre-builds and stuff like that because these pre-built manufacturers literally have to purchase these licenses to put in the computers, which are hundreds of dollars. Now this is where we start to talk about SteamOS. When SteamOS first made its appearance way back in the day in 2015, if you remember the original Steam machines, it wasn't all that there yet. In fact, compatibility was solely reliant on native Linux builds, which let me tell you, few and far between, they did not exist and we only had so many games we could play on the original Steam machines. However, when they came out with the Steam Deck LCD, the original first model, a revised SteamOS with Proton support, which is a compatibility layer that helps Windows games run, SteamOS quickly gained a really fast following for its ease of use, customizability, and just overall respect for the consumer. Before, the main reason people wouldn't use Linux and SteamOS as a result was because you couldn't play a lot of games on it. When Valve launched Proton, this allowed pretty much almost every single game to be played, not including the ones like I mentioned earlier that use any cheat and need more access to the kernel. Honestly, when you're using SteamOS nowadays, you, you forget that you're using Linux. It really is nowadays as simple as clicking install on a supported game on SteamOS, clicking play, and being right in the game. In fact, it's gotten so easy that it's often quicker than launching a game through Windows nowadays. And SteamOS has really turned PC gaming into this reliable appliance-like experience that just works. Now, we already know how weird Windows is with just not working half the time. SteamOS threw all of this out the back door and said, you know what, we'll just do the basics to keep you up and running and then you get to choose everything else. This starts with updates. SteamOS updates nowadays are pretty much meant to help Steam Deck capability because that's what's mainly running SteamOS. None of them are pushing features we don't need like AI and weird security fixes. It doesn't need to push these because it doesn't have the issues Windows has with a vast amount of malware out there that's targeted for the Windows platform. Yes, there is viruses and malware on Linux, but very few and far between. Not only are updates reliable and efficient, but 
input. With Bluetooth baked into SteamOS and the Steam Deck for that matter, it's really very much plug and play. It's actually a lot more plug and play than Windows. And I have a very specific example. Now, for a lot of you who use AirPods with Windows or have attempted to, there is this common error where Windows will shut them off to conserve power. And it took me hours to figure out. I literally did none of this with SteamOS. All I did was sync my AirPods with Bluetooth, connect to them, and they work perfectly. To add insult to injury, there are add-ons you can get through Decky, which if you don't know, is a third-party installer on SteamOS that lets you get plugins you can add to enhance the experience. There's a plugin called Magic Pods that actually lets you change the noise cancellation features in, in, the, in the AirPods itself. You can enable all this from the Steam Deck. Now on to power. SteamOS lets you literally manage everything out the box. You can change your TDP, stuff that you would need to directly go into the BIOS on Windows to do for the most part, or through third-party software, basically like the MSI software, Dragon Center. I think that's what it's called nowadays. I digress, you don't need any third-party software, it's baked into SteamOS itself. And battery management. Now, we can't say for every single device using SteamOS that the battery is great. Some devices have different battery wattages and different overall specs. However, if we're going off the Steam Deck alone, Linux just uses less power and you can tune the settings so if you're out and about and you don't have a charger nearby, you can lower the frame rate cap of the display or lower the TDP of the CPU to basically give you more longevity. Now the ecosystem with SteamOS is another big thing. If you're on the Steam Deck, you'll have a whole list of verified games that work perfectly out the box and playable games. These are games Valve has gone and vetted to make sure that they work great. And because of this, a lot of developers making games that are publishing to Steam nowadays are actually testing on the Steam Deck and SteamOS itself to make sure their games run on Linux through Proton. While Windows is obviously the main goal, Proton has made it so that if you develop games for Windows, they may automatically work on SteamOS without any extra work on your end. So the ecosystem on SteamOS is very healthy. If you look at all the verified games, we're over 20,000 games on Steam that are either verified or playable, and it's growing day by day. There are new games coming out day one that work great, and Valve sometimes pushes out updates to SteamOS if a game doesn't work right, and they'll fix specific issues for those titles. All stuff that's just benefiting the consumer. Another thing is future-proofing. Now we're seeing with the Steam Frame that Valve has made Linux compatible with ARM. ARM support through FEX, like Proton, basically it's a translation layer. Apparently it works great, which is good because with the long term, we're seeing a rise in ARM CPUs nowadays for their power efficiency and overall performance. And it means that future devices that use ARM chips will work perfectly with SteamOS, or that's the goal at least. Microsoft does have this as well with some other Copilot Plus PCs, but just goes to show that Linux is right behind them. And the longevity. I feel like it's really important to talk about this. Windows with every new update is becoming harder and harder to run on older systems. In fact, there's a ton of videos if you just go on YouTube, you can look back to people resurrecting old laptops with SteamOS or Bazite on them. Because of how light Linux operates, you can run it on a lot of older machines. Why this matters long term is so important. Linux is freedom. Windows is control. And we're starting to see this day by day. And I think a reduced reliance on Microsoft would be really healthy. It means the freedom to run the games you want your way and use the software you want. And on top of that, it's free. Linux is an open source OS that has tons of forks and distributions. We've never had to pay for licenses. And with the way Microsoft's going with AI features, ads in the search bar, and just this overall disrespect for the consumer, I think it's really important that we take the free road and shoot for the stars with Linux. As of the release date of this video, Windows is still the overall OS that just is pretty much compatible with most things, especially if you do a lot of creative work like video editing, Photoshop, music production, it's always going to be the place to go. I'd actually say music production is a little better on Mac. But for gamers and honestly basic PC users that are doing web browsing or media consumption, I think SteamOS is the best operating system right now. I made a short last week and basically I showed that I use the Steam Deck as a media machine, not just for gaming. I dock it and I watch movies and YouTube and it's all so seamless. It took 
a little bit of setup to get right, but it was nothing crazy that is super hard to learn. Before the Steam Deck came out, I have never touched Linux. It's my first time using this kind of software, and I have done so much with it. And this just goes to show that SteamOS means freedom, control, and sustainability, which is the one reason over Microsoft and Windows that I think SteamOS absolutely crushes it. And if you're thinking about jumping ship from Windows 10 and you don't want to go to Windows 11, I honestly think getting Bazite or a build of SteamOS on your machine if it can run it is a great idea. So now I want to ask you, would you switch to SteamOS? I want to know down below. Thank you all so much for watching again. This has been Nick and I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.